Hello everyone and welcome to the forest. This is Matt from In Defense of Plants and we're out here today enjoying a blustery winter's day. Now, despite the fact that all of the plant life around here has gone dormant, there's still plenty to be seen. So come on, let's go see what we can find. Now, if you look around, you'll notice that some trees seem to be holding on to their leaves for the winter, despite being deciduous. This is called marcescence and nobody really knows why it happens. What we do know is that it tends to happen on younger trees and on the lower branches. Now, some hypotheses have been put forward to explain this, including protection of the buds throughout the winter. But my favorite in particular is that all this dead plant material with no nutrients in it actually prevents herbivory. Deer looking to nimble on some tasty little buds would have to deal with a mouthful of, of mostly just carbon and not much else. So this is a fun mystery and it really helps you identify certain trees because it tends to happen most frequently in beaches and oaks. So take a look around and notice which trees are doing it. You'll be happy you did. Now not all plants senesce their living tissues for the winter. Take for instance this Christmas fern right here. It keeps its tissues alive by pumping them full of antifreeze. Now the benefit of doing this is that when favorable conditions return and it gets warm enough for photosynthesis, this plant gets a jump start on the game while it's growing new leaves. It's a great way to ensure that it hits the ground running come spring. It's an awesome species, it's quite hardy, and an excellent plant for a native fern and garden. Make sure to keep your eyes open for it. Its green is really hard to miss this time of year. Now winter is a time when I really start to notice bark. It's a really good way of identifying species because a lot of bark characteristics are inherent aspects of those particular species. But some aspects such as these dark and light are from external factors. In this case, it's a species of fungus that lives only in the outer layer of the tree bark. In other words, it's not hurting this tree whatsoever. But as it decomposes this outer corky layer, it leaves these sloughed off parts of the inner bark that it can't digest, giving it this dark and light patterns. And this, again, perfect time of year to be noticing such things. Check this out. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest species of fungus in the forest. This is what some people call the beech bark aphid poop eater. Now the reason for that is because one, you'll only find it within the vicinity of a beech tree, and two, it lives off of the poop of an aphid that, you guessed it, only feeds on the sap of beech trees. Now aphids eat so much sap that they can't keep up with all of the liquid, and that means they're constantly pooping out sugary sap. And this fungus feeds on that sap, and only that sap. So wherever there's been a colony of those aphids gradually pooping down, this fungus can germinate and grow and feed on that over time. Now when it starts off, it's not this color. It's more of a yellow spongy color. But as the summer wears on, it changes the type of spores it's producing and starts to get melanized. In other words, it's turning this black hard color. And it is pretty rigid. I mean, this is a leaf that's almost solid because of the fungus. This is such a cool mutualistic interaction. This is not a lethal fungus. And again, it's only living on the poop of an aphid that only feeds on beech trees. How cool is that? Such a great find, and it's really easy to spot against the backdrop of white of winter. This is awesome. Well, everyone, this was an excellent winter adventure. I hope you enjoyed it. We saw a lot of cool stuff today. 2017, for all of its ups and downs, was a great year for botanical adventures. And we've got a lot of cool projects in the works for 2018. But in the meantime, we'd like to know what you would like to see. What plants should we go and search for? What kind of areas should we visit? Let us know down in the comments. Also, if you'd like to stay up to date on all the great projects we're working on, don't forget to hit subscribe. Thank you for everything you've done. We couldn't be doing this without you, and it's been a lot of fun. So here's to more wonderful botanical adventures brought to you by In Defense Plants. Adios, everyone.